Hey everybody, it's Mike from Production Crate. And um, today I'm gonna show you guys how to do something pretty cool. So we've got these corridors here and I already showed you guys a little bit about Unreal earlier where we brought that superhero into the program. We got him running around. Now I wanna show you guys how to get some props and environments set up in Unreal. Spoiler alert, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you where you can download this specific set uh, of props already optimized for Unreal Engine, but I'm also gonna show you how I did it so that you guys can take any 3D asset, any 3D environmental piece and optimize it for Unreal and make it work nice and smooth. So let me just show you the problem that we're trying to solve here. This is the corridors from Render Crate. I just did a drag and drop right into the program with no optimization. You can see straight from Production Crate, I can download these files and they just work. But we do have some problems with collision. So notice this hallway here. This is a pretty cool hallway. If I run in to this door, it won't let me go through. And when I try to shoot, the ball just bounces off. There's a couple things you might see pop up that are issues uh, as we go through this video. And I think that might be because of the giant 8K textures. So these techniques that I'm gonna show you, they're helpful if you wanna make a game or if you wanna do virtual production and VFX. So here's all the assets laid out. And if I dig into my content browser here, um, this is actually the door that was giving us trouble. There's a few other pieces that will do the same thing, but this is a pretty good example of why you might need to pay special attention and do some optimization. So if I double click this asset and open it up, it'll kind of isolate it, we can look at it, and it looks fine. It's an open doorway with no doors, but if I go up to show simple collision, I can see that there's this green shape that went around it. What's happening here is Unreal Engine is creating this geometry, it's auto-generating this, and it's just a shape that acts as collision. The problem with it is it won't create any holes through the collision object, and it can't do concave shapes either. So this little cutout here, it has this invisible wall you really want to get this down and get it as accurate as possible. All right, so I've opened up Maya and I've imported all of the pieces that come with our corridor pack. You can see there's actually a lot of really cool options here. Quick note, you don't need to use Maya for this. Any 3D modeling program will be fine. So we're gonna do two things. First thing is the modeling portion. I need to create collision geometry for all this stuff that's more accurate. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to optimize the textures. So this is the doorway that was giving us trouble. Now, I wanna put this in the middle of the scene because when you import things into Unreal Engine, the pivot point of the object, the center where it rotates from, um, that is wherever the middle of your scene is, your origin in 3D space. So I can see that my pivot point is right here on this object, but if I were to import this into Unreal right now, the anchor point would be the origin of the scene, which is right here, kind of outside the mesh. So it doesn't matter where the pivot point is in Maya, you have to move the mesh to the origin point and put it where you want the pivot point to be. So if I wanted the pivot point in Unreal to be on this corner right here, what I would need to do is make sure that corner is snapped right to the middle of the scene like that. So when I import it to Unreal, that's how it's gonna rotate. So I actually want the middle to be the pivot point. You can see I've moved it so that the origin is right in the middle of my scene. And I also wanna make sure that the bottom of my asset is right on the grid because the grid is the ground plane in Unreal. So even though my pivot point is up here in Maya, it's gonna be down there at the bottom in Unreal. The next step now is I have to create my collision geometry. So let's actually hide everything that isn't this asset. I'm just gonna press H to hide it. And now we're just looking at that door. So what's the point of collision geometry? Why, why can't we just make it so that our uh, bullets and things and our characters just run into this geometry right here? Every time you import anything into the game engine, anytime a level loads, it has to think for a second and it slows down the game. It could slow down frame rate or it could just slow down level load times in between levels. If objects are colliding with this geometry, it actually has to think about all of of these polygons twice. Once when it's rendering it, and then has to think about it again when things are colliding with it. And so what we do is we create this really simplified geometry and the computer doesn't have to think as hard. There's a couple of rules that we need to remember as we're creating collision geometry. Uh, the first one is it has to be named properly, which we'll go over when we get there. It can't have any holes in it and it can't have any concave shapes. So I'm gonna actually create a cube. I'm gonna scale it up. Now, I like to create a new material for the collision geometry. It's not necessary, but I like to do it so I, I can see a little bit better what's going on. So I'm just gonna create a, like a semi-transparent uh, green material in this case, because there's no green in my asset. So I'm just gonna do green, semi-transparent. That way I don't mistake it for any part of my corridor set here. What I need to do is I need to sort of get this as close to the shape as possible without breaking any of those rules I mentioned. So I'm just gonna sort of box in this door here box in this side. If you're a modeler, you might think, okay, I know what to do next. I'm gonna slice this right here near the bottom and then extrude across like so. Well, we can't do that. We just broke one of our rules. We can't have any concave surfaces. So if I isolate this, you can see that this little cutout here is concave. 
And what's gonna happen if we do that is Unreal is gonna automatically fill this in so it's not concave. Instead of doing an extrusion, we're just gonna create a bunch of different cubes. Um, it's a fine to have a lot of different pieces of collision geometry. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we can have convex shapes, that's fine. So if I bring this down, you know, I can refine the shape this way as long as I don't bring this down so far that now we've got like a Pac-Man mouth. So it can be whatever shape you want, but no holes, no concave shapes. All right, so I've got the uh, door frame blocked out. Uh, we gotta get these doors worked out here too. So these are gonna be pretty simple. They're just cubes, right? So let me create a quick cube for this one. Duplicate that for the other door. Uh, this part's not totally necessary, but I like to actually select all of my geometry and triangulate it just in case I made anything bad, like an N-Gon, which is a, a face with more than four sides. So I'm just gonna select all of my collision geometry and just go mesh, triangulate. That'll fix any errors. The next step is naming, which is extremely important. So when we bring this into Unreal Engine, we're gonna bring it in as an FBX, and FBXs store individual meshes in a single file. I'm gonna be exporting this door frame, and then both doors, and all of the collision geometry that goes with it. It will remember and respect the names that I give it. Um, there's a certain way of naming this collision geometry so that Unreal Engine sees it and doesn't render it. You won't see it, but it knows it's a collision layer for the, for the objects. The naming convention is this. You're gonna go and click on the object, so in this case it's gonna be the double door. I'm gonna copy that name, and then I'm gonna to go to the first piece of geometry associated with that double door frame. And here's the naming convention, UCX, and then you go underscore and paste the name. So UCX underscore double door, and then underscore zero zero for the first one. Then I'm gonna copy that and click on the next piece of geometry. And you can just paste it, at least in Maya, you can do this where if you name something the exact same thing as something else, it will automatically change it to 001 and it'll, it'll increase the numbers as you go. I don't know if every program does that, but basically you want to start with 00 and work your way up to 01, 02, 03. Let me just paste these in. Okay, so these are all the parts that are associated with that door frame and you can see that they're all named exactly the same with a sort of an increasing sequential number at the end. Now these parts here are my collision layers for the doors, so I want to definitely get those names right. So this one's double door left, let's copy that, and I'll name this UCX underscore double door left, zero, zero. And then the other one is double door right, so we'll copy that. UCX underscore double door right, zero, zero. Now here's a quick side note. What happens if you have an asset that has a number in it already? Like this one right here is called crate zero one. And what if it had two objects for collision? What would you call it? It's the same rule. UCX underscore crate one underscore zero zero. So even if the name of the object has a number in it, you still want to put the UCX number at the end. So UCX create zero one underscore zero one. All right, now we'll get back to the doors. I finished this asset. I've got door double. I've got door double left, door double right, and then all of the collision geometry associated with it. So now I'm going to export an FBX for this. File, export selection, FBX export, and I will save this somewhere that I can find it later, like my desktop, because I am an unorganized barbarian. I'll call it double doors. Okay, so that's the modeling portion done. Now you do wanna go through and do that to all of your assets. So I know that sounds time consuming to do this for every asset, but I've already done this for you. This specific scene with these corridor parts, I've already gone through and created all the collision geometry, optimized all the textures, and you'll be able to download that from the store by the time this video uploads. Hey everybody, it's Future Mike here. Um, just wanna let you guys know that as promised, those optimized corridors are now up on the website. And if you wanna know how to actually get them into your Unreal project, I made a really quick video over on the Creators channel. Go check that out. It's the shortest video I've ever made, super easy. Easy. Go check it out now. So next what we want to do is optimize the textures. Now these are 8k Which is pretty heavy. So I'm going to reduce this to 4k, which is still pretty heavy for a video game um, You might even want to go down to 2k if you're actually trying to make a game with this So I've got these textures here in this case This scene is made up of four texture sets and each one comes with the usual color metallic roughness normal and some of them even have emissive. So first thing I'm gonna do is just reduce the size here. I'm gonna go to image size and let's type in 4096 by 4096, that's 4K. There's still a very big texture for games. Now whether or not you decided to reduce the size of those textures, I can show you how to reduce the number of textures you have to even use. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a really cool technique called channel packing. If you look here at the color map and you go to the channels, you can see that it's made up of the red, green, and blue channels. Three channels for a full color image, obviously you need that. If I go to the metallic map it's black and white and if I go to the channels it's just gray and we have multiple black and white maps and they all have that sort of unoptimized inefficiency so what we can do is we can actually create a new texture where all the black and white maps take up a single channel of a full RGB full color image what I'm gonna do is create a new document 
And let's make it 4096 by 4096, 72 dpi. So here we have our new image, it's just white. If I go over to the channels, I can see we have red, green, blue. Now you can pack this any way you want in any order you want. Kind of the standard workflow, the typical thing that people are gonna expect if you're gonna share your textures with other Unreal artists is ORM, Occlusion Roughness Metallic in that order. So red, green, blue, RGB is ORM. Just punch the mic. So this first channel is occlusion. We don't actually have any ambient occlusion. We don't have a texture for that, so I'm just gonna leave it white. But if you have an ambient occlusion map, it goes in the red channel. The next one is roughness. The green channel is roughness. So I'm gonna go over here to my roughness map and I'll just select all and copy and we'll paste that into the green channel. And then the last one is M for metallic. So I'm gonna copy metallic, paste that into the blue channel. So again, we have occlusion, which there is none, so it's just white. Uh, roughness, metallic. Now, when I click on the RGB layer, you can see it looks crazy. So if you ever are downloading any sort of 3D assets, maybe from the Unreal Store, and you see a map that's just this crazy fiery color, that's probably the packed map or the ORM map. So it's actually all three of those textures in one file. We just reduce the number of things we have to load into Unreal, and that's gonna help with frame rate, especially over the size of an entire game. So let's save all these to that folder where we saved our FBX earlier. So here's my new reduced size uh, base color map. So let's go ahead and save and the emissive. I'm gonna skip the metallic map. I'm gonna save the normal map, skip the roughness map, and I'll save my new ORM map, my packed map. And I'll just click here to steal the name and I'll just call it, I guess in this case, corridor M1 underscore ORM, occlusion roughness metallic all in one texture. Next step is to just import this into the scene. Inside of Unreal, I'm actually gonna make a separate folder so I don't get it mixed in with all the um, pre-optimized assets that I already have. So let me create a new folder here. And I'll call this optimized. Inside of the optimized folder, I'm gonna go import and I'm gonna navigate to where I saved that FBX from earlier, right here, double doors. And let's hit open. Default settings should be fine. Okay, so here's what we get. In this case, we get three pieces of geometry because it's got moving parts, you know, it's got the two doors and the door frame. We get a material and oftentimes it'll also import the color map, which is really cool. It just automatically imports the texture. Let's really quickly double check to make sure that our collision is working properly. Double click this and look at it by going to show simple collision. Looks pretty good. Looks like there's a gap there. Uh, the other way to test it is to just drag it into the scene and then press play, see what happens. So there's my door frame. Remember way back in the beginning of the video, this is the one I couldn't walk through. I can walk through it now. Now I'm gonna click and just shoot at the door frame. You can see the bullet goes through the door and it bounces off the, the walls, which is very cool. Now we could also bring in the doors to go with it. So if I select all three of these, drag and drop them, notice a couple things. Notice that because in Maya, they were arranged the way I want them to be, kind of in the closed position, even though in Unreal they're three different assets, if I drag them all in at the same time, they're all aligned the way I want. They're not stacked up um, on the origin or just like stacked up on top of each other. They're positioned the way they were positioned back in Maya. And also notice that my pivot point is where I want it to be. So I can rotate it from here because that's where the origin is in the scene right here. It's not based on where the pivot point is in Maya, it's based on the origin of the scene when I export it. I recommend you guys arrange your pivot points so it's easy to snap things. Now one last step to make sure this is done and ready to go is to plug in our textures. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go import all of my optimized and packed textures. I did this beforehand. So notice that we have some textures here with some crazy colors. Those are all my ORM maps. So let me import all my textures here. Here they are. Now, one quick step that we have to do before we can use this, we have to go to our ORM maps, all four of them in this case. So I'm just control clicking to select them all. And we need to tell it not to color correct. It needs to be in linear color space. And when you import a texture, it's an sRGB. So I'm gonna select all of my ORM maps. I'm gonna right click and go to asset actions, bulk edit via property matrix. So it sounds fancy, but when this opens up, you can see that it's just got all of my textures here listed that I had selected, and it just makes it so I can change something about them all at the same time. So right here, I can see that all four of these have the sRGB box checked. I'm just gonna uncheck that. And that's just gonna put the textures in uh, linear space, which is something you always wanna do with roughness maps, uh, metalness maps, things like that. Perfect. Now let me show you how to plug in these textures. So here's the material that was associated with my door frame. Let's just open that up. And I can see that in this case, it's called Corridor M3 or Material 3. So I'm gonna grab all the textures that are called Corridor M3. So here's the color, here's the normal, here's the ORM. Let's drag that into our material editor. And it looks like we already have a color plugged in here. I'm just gonna delete that. And this is just like any other node-based uh, rendering engine. 
I grab my color map right here, my color texture, grab the RGB out and plug it into base color in for my material. This one's my normal map, so I'll plug RGB into normal. And this is the one that's really cool. This is the ORM map. So remember, red channel is occlusion. Now we don't, in this case, we don't really have occlusion, it's just white. So if I plug it in, probably nothing will happen. G is roughness and blue is metallic. All that information is plugged just into this one texture. So now if I drag my door frame out into the scene, it's got all of the cool shininess, all of the cool metalness, and most importantly for this video, it's got the proper collision. So here it is, and if I shoot through that little door, you can see that my bullet goes through. Okay, so hopefully that helps you guys optimize your scenes or get them ready for simulation if you're filmmakers. This scene is already optimized, so you don't have to do it yourself, but hopefully this video showed you how you can download any other asset in the future, optimize it for Unreal, and create your own games or virtual productions. If you do that, be sure to share it with us so we can share it with the world, but only if you make it awesome.